show as well. But JP, there's only one place to start this week. Um, and I've named the show the uh, the CM Punk News and Previews because you best believe I am taking this opportunity, JP. As news has broken over the last uh, 24 hours, as you have uh, mm. rightly, uh, co- you know, uh, covered and as we've uh, kind of waited for uh, for today for the big moment to, uh, to talk it all, CM Punk coming back to AEW, maybe. Um, we have a uh, we had it's one it's a roller coaster this JP like the different reports we've had over the the last while coming from it's one of those stories where you can tell which side is saying what like there's a more than anything there's a PR war going on right now it feels like and mm. a FDR ball is sat right in the middle uh, of that PR war as uh, Fightful Select uh, were the first to uh, officially report the story the plans are in place uh, according to uh, to their sources for CM Punk to return to AEW this summer uh, they reported that Punk is expected to be back in time for the June 21st Dynamite from Chicago which is the lead into Forbidden Door um, that show getting announced weirdly on the uh, on the Wednesday probably should have tipped us off. There was extra detail in the story from Fightful saying that Punk wants to work with the Elite upon his return. Did I mention there was a PR war going on? Um, and has pushed for meeting with them for quite a while. And it's unclear whether they've had contact, but there is a meeting planned with CM Punk and Chris Jericho, who, have, of course, have had the, uh, the different run-ins. Apparently, there's traction inside Warner Brothers Discovery regarding, and we're going to get to this second part of the story in a minute, a Saturday AEW show, and that potentially being some kind of soft brand split, aka a way to have Punk on one show and all of his enemies on the other. So it's going to be mm. Punk, Punk, Dan Housen and, uh, and Brody King and nobody else on the Saturday show at, uh, it seems like uh, at the moment. And if that wasn't enough, that was reported by Fightful. Obviously, the, the Observer was out today. Uh, Meltzer added his two cents on it. Um, saying that a punk return is largely expected, um, according to Big Dave, um, but it's a tenuous situation because the dressing room issues involving him have not been settled at press time, and that the working idea was, as we just said, the Saturday show would star punk and it would split crews to a large degree. So Meltzer somewhat corroborating what it what Fight Fuller reported. You could kind of feel it in a, in some of Meltzer and, a, and Alvarez's strange audio this week where Meltzer kept saying something like, oh, you know what's going on. You know more than me, don't you, Brian? And Brian wasn't volunteering or anything, and Dave wasn't volunteering or anything. You know, there's a bit of spin here, JP, but it feels relatively concrete there, yeah, despite this story mm. over the last while and despite, you know, what what many might have expected with Punk. He's back, maybe? Question mark? I think he is back. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think... The way he's come back in terms of this is the only time I've heard of a roster split actually that you think, well, this might not be a bad thing to do, certainly in the short term as well. Um, mm. But it's, this Saturday show is the thing that's kind of snuck in. And, and I think as part of this, like Warner Brothers Discovery are involved somehow mm. in, in all of this stuff because clearly they, they, want amount, they want punk and the mm. amount of content on there as well. Imagine how much they're going to be paying. This is next. We're talking about an extra two hours as well. And I, you know, but so the idea of punk coming back, it's like they've they've set it up in that mm. way where he can come back. Mm. I think with all in and everything else, I was thinking about this like punk's never headlined a WrestleMania. Mm. Well, here is effectively something potentially on that kind of level, big stadium mm. show that he can end up headlining. The ego in him will definitely be like kind of a piece for that. I don't want to hear any more of Dax Harwood. I'm thoroughly, 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 thoroughly bored of that man. I, I really am. <laughs> but I think you have to bring him back. And especially yeah. like if if Warner Brothers Discovery are going, we're launching something on sat on Saturdays at eight o'clock. So we're talking prime time on a Saturday, mm-hmm. talking about it being live as well. I'm assuming that's where they'll they'll tape Ring of Honor if they're doing dynamite rampage deals. But like it says a lot to that relationship, which you know we're going to talk about. Mm. We talk about all in Wembley as well. That that's there. The thing they have to do in terms of getting, him, they have to have these meetings, and there has to be an element of just like clear the air discussions, like proper like mediation stuff. You see it in the workplace at times where, you know, effectively it's like couples counselling it feels like they're going to have to have where one of them is going to have to sit there and just sort of take a load of verbal abuse and the other one and just say, well, I understand how you're feeling, Phil. Now it's my go as Tyson stands up and calls fucking punk mm. a cunt or whatever. Um, those kind of, th- like, they're going to have to have that serious kind of meeting. I think this soft brand split, 
I worry about it creatively, to be honest with you, but I, I think that's one of the, the other kind of issues that are there. Short it's wild, term, though, isn't it? That they need to do that just so Punk doesn't have another fist fight. Um, which you will, by the way. This is going to end in tears. <laughs> don't ever have it as an official splitting of the yeah. rosters. Just don't ha just have him on the Saturday shows. However, if they're EVPs, aren't they going to have? Aren't they going to be obliged to attend all of these? Yeah. Aren't all the yeah. other managers? But then we get to the idea of what is an EVP? Because at this point, it just appears that they're just wrestlers, and they gave them fancy titles because to sign them in case WWE wanted to. Yeah, well, I've got, I've got on the screen there like Jericho's response to it, where somebody said, "You know, correct me if I'm wrong, but Jericho's always willing to work with everyone and do what's best for business." And <laughs> he's just tweeted, "Not everyone." Like Meltzer's report that like things are not settled. Um, <laughs> I, I absolutely believe, which makes me, you know, it shows you. Mm. I think reading between the oh, yeah. lines on this, uh, the the big driver is got to be Tony Khan. He wants Punk back. You know, he is a yeah. punk fan at heart, like me. So, you know, we get on a little bit there, big time, when it comes to that. And it seems, despite everything, despite the Instagram post, despite all the, you know, everything that happened, the brawl outs and everything since. And, you know, we looked at, we looked at the Instagram post and all the kickoff of that. We just assumed that was the end. It was like, okay, if there was ever a chance of punk coming back, it's dead now. But I think what we maybe didn't rely on was the fact that, Tony fucking Khan really wants Punk to come back. Yeah. And, you know, what's going to play into that is this Saturday show, which we can talk a bit more about in a minute. What's going to play into that is obviously All In and Wembley, and you want all hands on deck. That's going to play into that. That's probably a factor in in in, uh, in Tony Khan's thinking. What's wild about this for me is that, it, based on that Jericho tweet, based on what Melter's reported today, like, this is all coming out and seems you know, not set in stone, but relatively set, you know, booking that Chicago Dynamite and the way of getting out as it has, that, like, the decision's already been made, and I think Tony Khan yeah. just thinks he can resolve the rest later. <laughs> it's just, like, it's some way to manage your locker room. Um, and I love it, don't get me wrong. Like, I am, like we always say, I've got two hats on. I've got the hat, you know, the mysterious analyst hat would always look at this situation and go, oh, you know, bringing Punk back at risk of pissing off the locker room. That you know, is is it worth it? He's he's clearly gonna blow up again based on that Instagram post and just based on everything we know about CM Punk through every yeah. company he's ever worked worked in. And then there's the fanboy in me that's like, fuck it, let's go, let 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 CM Punk go on like a ball of flame. If it turns out that Punk comes back and we get six good months out of him, where we get some great feuds. Some great backstage drama. He makes it, hopefully, in one piece to, to, to All In in London. And that's not a guarantee because the man yeah. is fucking falling apart at this point. That's the other element of punk right now. But he goes out in this blaze of glory that absolutely, I think, 90% certain will end in more trouble and more kickoff. And he will be probably, as much as all of them, that poison to the locker room that Jericho talks, talks about. But the play here is whether that's worth it. I think for my own personal entertainment, it's worth it. Um, I want to see CM Punk cut more promos. I want to see CM Punk do serious feuds on TV. I want to see CM Punk matches. The news guy in me wants to see the CM Punk drama as well. Oh, yeah. Tony Khan's got to decide, and it seems like he has, whether his fandom and what he wants out of Punk is worth that price that he's got, probably going to play. Because, I don't know, I think if he thinks he's going to manage the situation, I'm not sure he's... He's, you know, the, the signs we're seeing right now are the are the best for that. I think, you know, this this uh, this being a come by our moment and and everyone being best friends again is seemingly unlikely, but it's happening anyway. And this wasn't, yeah, in my list of things I expected the story the way this story to go. And I think between the two hours for the Saturday and the all in announcement, the business mm. justification for bringing him back because this is the thing that we have to say is he was like a mover when it came pay-per-view buy rates obviously their highest ever pay-per-view buy rate they did was with mm -hmm. punk on top he seemed to then raise the overall level of what those mm -hmm. pay-per-views would get like there was a like it felt like it was an extra core thirty thousand. We put that into practical kind of economics there as well tv ratings will obviously like short term have a boost we can't mm -hmm. say that all of punk being on tv has resulted in ratings gold but mm -hmm. then you know there are various other things so they are bringing him back. And Khan is also a fan of this. And if you see stuff of the All Access, they're like very much one of the stories is Thunder Rosa versus Britt Baker behind the scenes that they're kind of playing mm. up. And it does feel to me like they're very, very in like he 
Tony Khan is intent on having um, like a that bit of needle backstage, that idea of actually he can kind of he can kind of manage it. Mm. It's a risk, but it's a risk worth taking because all great promoters, you have to learn how to manage egos and difficult egos. He needs to learn. He, this happens at the Jaguars. This happens at Fulham. You know, mm. it won't all be kumbaya. And there are, you know, obviously there's a way of delegating and things like that. Is it worth him bringing him back? How much of this is Time Warner going, CM Punk is your biggest star. You bring him back. Like, we want him on TV. They're doing sure. this all-in show. I think they're going to end up running that on the max service that they mm. do. And mm. they're going to be, we want him there. It's like, it's that kind of a deal where you pay that... <laughs> It's one of those wrestling stories where if you explain it to people in real life, oh, the reason Punk can't come back is um, him and a bunch of other wrestlers, you know, had a bit of a fight. they had a bit of a fight backstage and he called them some names. Like anyone from the outside is probably going to go, and what are these Aren't these wrestlers? Can you not sort that out? Is that not normal? Like, you yeah. know what I mean? it's like They probably just look at it from that point. Of view. And I, there's an, maybe it's the Punk fanboy in me sneaking in, but there is that. It's like, I think the elites, if they are supposed to be EVPs, and maybe this is part of, you know, the the the, the PR war of Punk and F2 bit R is working on me. But like, if they're supposed to be like executives and grown ups, yes. they should probably want to make this work for the best in the company. Like they're absolutely how however unjustified punk is with what he's doing. And I, despite being a punk fan, I don't buy that any of this. It's not the fault of Hangman Page and his workers' rights promo. It's the fault. Oh, the only person who's a fault here is CM Punk, and it's what he yeah. did, and it's the it's the promo we cut in front of his boss. And it's the you know the promo we could call out Hamman Page, and it's the fight. It's all punk. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm not saying he's not guilty. But I think if you are an executive, yes, your feelings being hit matter. But <laughs> you should be an executive too, and you should maybe be looking at this from a business point of view, and at least be willing and be open to the possibility of that conversation and the possibility of working together to make the most money for the company, you know? And I say that recognising the PR war that's going on right now, but they probably do need to grow up a little bit, don't they? And they probably do need to they be all do. You know, dragged into this money programme that, that is there. And Punk does too, totally Punk does too, but I think there's a different weight if you're supposed to be EVPs. Well, they're both... They're both childish in different ways. And that's how I've always kind of felt about this. And it's why the thing about, like, you should be sorting this out and then saying, actually, we can all do quite well out of this. Yeah. Do the EVPs, like, with, in, in the Bucks and the Make, do they have the company's best interests at heart? Because mm. then at that point, if they're saying, no, we're not going to work with this guy because we don't like him, but he's the biggest star that we have. We don't care. We don't, we're not working with him. Mm. Like, at that state, and you can talk about, like, the, the fight and stuff. And, and the rest of it but i hate to say oh it's wrestling but like there is this kind of stuff that happens like mm. just given the nature of the industry itself it's not a justification of his actions no but i think you know and will mentions there that there was a rumor that you know time warner as it would have been there uh before it became warner brothers discovery that were kicking in some of his some of his salary in there as well that wouldn't be a surprise for that you have to recognize this guy is the thing that is necessarily best for business and this show in terms of all in wembley and that real kind of week with all out as well this this period of time is feels massively important gareth always speaks about look at the year on years the year on years are down ratings wise mm. like they're not great like there's how are they going to bump these metrics up the most obvious example is you bring back someone like that and if you go to the analogy of sports, every sports team has this, particularly in the US. And I always think of like basketball in particular, mm. there always seems to be histories of combustible characters who don't fundamentally get on, but can work together. Whether it's yeah. a Kobe Bryant and a Shaquille O'Neal, you know, yeah. that there are these people you don't have to get on. Like we don't get on with all the people that we work with. Like we don't. Yeah. The expectation isn't that all going to be, but there is an idea of professionalism. It's just that, when this profession is for these lads, they dress up in their pants and pretend to fight. So is... <laughs> that is an issue. And you know, you, you say to the business point of view, you know, Tam Warner want you know want what they want. Um, so Warner mm -hmm. Brothers Discovery, like like you say, that goes to this Saturday show. Uh, we can talk oh. the Saturday show. I don't think it's a good idea if it's truly what we. 
believe it is based on you know the report that we've had also over the last 24 hours you know wrestling observer newsletter saying the plan is a two-hour show with the same amount of star power as dynamite so it's almost like they're accepting rampage is dead <laughs> and they're just starting afresh with a new one but we're talking a proper saturday night like prime time 8, 8 p.m eastern full strength AEW show that's what they're talking about and i don't agree with that i don't think i'm not sure the product can support that if it's a brand split i think that's a horrendous idea i think oh. it's never worked for WWE. i've got no reason to believe it worked for AEW, even on an unofficial basis i think even silo and punk on saturdays i think they're gonna have to they're gonna have to work pay-per-views together you know there's gonna be crossover like yeah i don't think that's really a solution to a problem but i say all that personally thinking it's a bad idea if they're going forward with it and they're dropping a boatload of money to tony khan he feels like he can't say no to it and they want it if you're gonna do it you do know with all the star power you can get and that's the argument for bringing pulp back isn't it but i don't know what do you what do you think generally on that on, on the saturday show like in a world where tony khan is booking dynamite rampage the odd yeah. battle of the belts dark elevation ring of honor an entirely different promotion and now this like i can't really react positively to this like i i'm sure i'm gonna watch it we host the wrestling podcast i'm sure i'm gonna find time to to watch it of course i am it's a prime time saturday show that's probably gonna feature cm punk but long term it's like the you know it's the wwe thing isn't it you know taking that third hour raw as obviously from a business point of view paid off you know they've made untold millions from it and it's been worth the sacrifice to the overall quality of the show over the last decade plus this is another one of those situations, isn't it, where they're going to have to sacrifice the overall quality of the show because I'm just not sure, yeah, long-term, yeah. how I'll feel about an extra two hours of first-run primetime AEW programming fitting into, you know, everything else that AEW were doing. I'm really unhappy about an extra two hours of, of this. I really <laughs> well, am. Well, not... not like me, is that why we're in it? <laughs> I, like, I'm slightly fearful because already things like Ring of Honor, I said to myself, like, immediately from watching, and I, you know, it's like, yeah, there's good wrestling, but there's good wrestling everywhere. My yeah. issue is, is with this from a create is is the creative aspect for it. Money wise, you have to remember they were getting what forty five million a year approximately mm. from Time Warner for doing three hours of TV. Mm. That three hours, if you add in hour for Battle of the Belts sporadically, mm. hour for All Access, mm. and now you've got an extra two hours for this. There's quite a lot there. Now, they have the wrestlers to be able to fill this time. The problem is, is they're going to, I get the feeling they're going to do what WWE do, which is, well, we're just going to produce an hour of the same thing. And that's yeah. where we get into the issue of seeding booking. There is a chance across all of these TV shows that you have a different kind of flavor and feel for some of it, that you can try and do things and try and experiment. But we saw with do, is give one show red lightning and the other one blue. I think that'll sort it. We're done, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's as much as it. But, like, you know, I've you th there is a way of possible, like, for Rampage, you just turn it into effectively, like, a kind of developmental or anything mm -hmm. else. I mean, the, the idea that it can't be Ring of Honor is really kind of, like, fascinating because you add well, that into the mix and it's, it's just on that ridiculous. Point. On that point, JP, could I would Rampage really do any worse if it was like superstars? <laughs> you know, or it was like even if it was a clip show, <laughs> would it really nah. do much worse than it does? You know, I'm sure they probably won't want that, but um but what's yeah. the base limit ratings wise in the states that it gets? Mm. Is if you look at it like all access, I mean all access is a bad week, generally mm. massively above um slap fighting, a lot none of the controversy and a lot less grief with a partner they already know who's happy to produce content for them as well. So it's the idea that from a financial perspective, and it also makes them easier to sell overall because they are yeah. now a massive content creator. None of this makes for good TV. More like, hours, yeah. If but it was different is, shows. You mm. could make Rampage the Women show. That's a, that's was, a shout and a half. Like That's... That's the thing I've always been banging on about as well. And you can do it in a kind of low risk time. Like, it just has to be, it can't be the same type of storytelling that Dynamite, Rampage, Battle of the Belts, and mm -hmm. Ring of Honor all suffer from, which is, mm -hmm. you know, it's all being booked by the same person. Why? Because it has the same feel, it has the same fingerprints all over it. It's what we've seen with WWE. Eventually, mm -hmm. Vince gets his hands on it. And it's just like, well, it's ruined now. 
because now it's like ECW on that. Just watched it from the day one. No. And, and, and that's what it's going to be. It's, if it's stuff that's different, I'm not saying mm-hmm. edgy content like or anything else, but making Rampage the women's show is by far and away like a really good show as yeah, well. I don't, it's like when, when Ron, you know, believe it or not, folks, and we'll tell Matty this, there was an IWC back when they first did the brand split. I remember the IWC consensus. Um, not that there's an oh, F yeah. to me there. I take that back. There was never such a thing as I, IWC. We're all on the fucking internet. But like the hardcore fan consensus, you know, you'd read it in Power Slam. I remember Finn Martin being like, well, Raw should be uh, sports entertaining, you know, Mike Work show and SmackDown should be, you know, wins and losses matter. Even at like league tables and stuff like that, he wanted SmackDown to be. Those types of stylistic differences. I don't think Tony Khan, if he didn't do that with Ring of Honor, he's not doing that here. I think we're going to resign ourselves to the fact that it's just going to be two more hours. And, it is. you know, as good as Dynamite is, it's. I, I'll say it, it's the, probably the best wrestling TV show that's ever been. I think it's better than Nitro, um, you know, quality oh, yeah. wise. We have lots of complaints, don't get me wrong. It's not perfect. But if you just look at the sheer quality of stuff we've gotten over the last three years, I've absolutely loved it. You still got your limits, though, haven't you? You know, it, why not add another, you know, it's like Raw, you had an extra hour. Why not add another three hours? Because obviously there's a limit. Like, same with this, you'd add an extra two hours. What about another two hours? What about another two hours? There's clearly a breaking point. And this feels like it's around my breaking point. I guess we'll, I guess we'll see. But mm. yeah, I think the the play is probably prob- you're right. The play is probably treat this differently. Different booker, different run sheet, different everything. You're yes. not getting that with the Tony Khan company. I'd be very surprised if that's the way. It's just not how he operates, is it? He, you know, he has to be in control of everything, um, unless it's Fulham, depending on uh, on who you believe on that. You know. Yeah. Well, if 